Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. A proverb many times quoted in these food security discussions. But is this proverb truly the solution? Should we be abandoning all of our direct food assistance activities and focusing our resources and our energy on teaching people to fish? Well, baby Zhao and his mother, who I met in a For Africa malnutrition clinic in Angola, would suggest otherwise. Because the reality is that baby Zhao and his severe acute malnourished state would have died long before the fishing training was complete or the first fish was ever caught. So baby Zhao's mother would advocate that maybe there's actually a case to be made for giving fish while we sustain life long enough for people to learn how to fish and sustain themselves. I, the other day, was home and my son was studying, which is, uh, if you're a parent, that's really an applaudable thing when you actually see your son studying, <laughs> especially your son. And, uh, but he came downstairs, as he does about every five minutes when he's studying, and he said, uh, Dad, I'm hungry. Can you make me some lunch? So I made him lunch and I, he was sitting there eating his lunch and I was kind of timing how long till he'd go study again. And I was thinking about this proverb and I was watching him eat and I thought, you know, it's interesting. I, he came and asked for food and I didn't say, well, Peter, you know, best you go back upstairs, carry on studying because, you know, you need to learn how to provide for yourself. Okay. No, I did what you and I would all do. I gave him his meal. I gave him lunch. And I gave him the very tools that he needed to be able to go back, hopefully study properly, and one day sustain himself, his family, hopefully a broader community. And I find it interesting because here on the continent of Africa, we are bombarded with plans. It's amazing how everyone has a plan for Africa. Okay, you don't have to talk to anyone for more than five minutes. Where are you from? No, I'm from Africa. Oh, let me tell you my plan for Africa. <laughs> but here's the reality. We as Africans, our communities, we also have plans for Africa. But you see, often as organizations, we go and engage with communities and we bring our plan. The miraculous transformational plan. And we bring it to the community, and here's the reality. It's not the community's plan A. It never is. It may not even be plan B or C, but it is the only plan that has resources behind it. So what do they do? They embrace our plan or our resources, and we implement our plan. Inherently unsustainable from day one. What I believe we should be doing is actually engaging with the community and listening to their plan. What's their plan A? Let's help refine and improve that plan based on our experiences. And then we can put our resources behind that plan, which is now owned by the community and inherently sustainable from day one because it will live long beyond any of our interventions. Cipriana is a farmer. She was trained in agriculture. She got the fishing training. She was really successful. She was a commercial farmer who was providing not only for her family, but able to produce enough to trade commercially on her local market. Cipriana is a great example of what happens when we teach to fish. Maybe we'd argue the proverb is right. But Cipriana told me that, unfortunately, she's from a part of Angola where climate change has hugely impacted them. She explained to me that after five years of failed crops due to no or low rain, she had to abandon her commercial farm and move to the closest city to try and make an income. As she sits with her malnourished child next to her, she tells me, how just two months earlier, she lost one of her other children. And then she said this. She said, I bring my children in early every day, 
and close the door so they don't have to watch the others in the neighborhood eat. She said, sometimes we have a meal a day. For the last three days, we've had nothing. Cipriana would argue that maybe teaching to fish is not the silver bullet that we think it is. You see, Proverbs are simple statements, powerful in their meanings. But solving food security is complex, not simple, and requires a multifaceted approach, a long-term approach. Thomas is a great example of this approach. Thomas is a 44-year-old farmer in Mozambique who not so many years ago was chronically food insecure, a man who desperately needed a fish. And so that's what we gave him, a fish. But he also wanted to learn how to fish. He had a plan. And so we taught him to fish. And two years ago, Thomas made $1,000 from his farming activities. Last year, Thomas made $10,000 from his farming activities. Now that's 10x. Not TEDx. 10x. Okay? That's transformational. But you see, the truth is that Thomas is an example of what happens when we don't only give fish and teach to fish, but we actually provide access to credit. We provide market access. We give the appropriate technologies to guard against things like climate change, and we make a long-term, multifaceted, integrated approach to transforming community by community. You see, I would say that global food security is not a Thomas problem. Global food security, in fact, is not an Africa problem. It's a you problem. It's a me problem. The, the world today is more fragile from a food security perspective than it's ever been. So tomorrow's food insecure could be you or me. It could be America or Europe. In fact, from the data I'm seeing, it strongly suggests that if we don't activate commercial agriculture in Africa very soon, the world won't feed itself in 50 years' time. So the truth is that global food security is truly a you and me problem. So what do we do about this? Where do we start, you say? Well, I'll give you another proverb, a great African one. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do we solve this problem? One bite at a time. Okay, and so as an organization, I can only share from our successes and failures the lessons we've learned working with great partners like World Food Program and others that have made these programs possible. And what we've learned is that it takes a multifaceted, integrated development approach. And so that's where we start many times providing fish, sustaining life long enough to be able to stabilize and build back better to provide the platforms for communities to become sustainable. This takes grants and donations. It takes the nonprofit and NGO activity, our traditional programs that we do. But it can't stop there. You see, I don't know about you, but as an African, I don't have a dream of an Africa that sustains. I have a dream of an Africa that thrives. And so we have to continue beyond that. And this is where we have to bring investment. And we've got to invest in those very same communities. We've got to help to be able to build the agribusiness economies and create access to the very technologies and the financing that it takes to truly transform and truly build commercial agriculture. And so what does that look like? Well, for us, we provide credit to farmers. We give them loans, but we don't give those loans in cash. To manage risk, what we do is we actually provide those loans in vouchers. And so they get a set of vouchers for extension services and input supply and mechanization. And we're able to manage the risk of the farmer because if he doesn't uh, cash in his extension voucher, then we freeze his other vouchers until he does. Why? Because he's become too high risk, because he's not getting the technical assistance he needs to truly succeed. And then we go on from there, and what we do is we bring him uberized, mechanized services. 
Because one of the biggest barriers to Thomas going from 10,000 to 20 to 100,000 is being able to go from manual to mechanized. But he can't afford to mechanize, even if we gave him the credit for it. It's too big a step. And so we asset finance a local business, a local operator. With the assets he needs to provide that Uberized, mechanized service. And then we bring him a captive market. The very fishermen or farmers that have the vouchers in their loan for his services. And so we can ensure that we're now undergirding and building the agribusiness economy. And so it goes on from there. We secure these loans with collateral, against collateral, the very harvest or, or the fish that have been caught. And those same collateral management services ensure that the farmer or the fisherman is no longer a price taker selling everything at harvest, but rather can sell through the season and get a better return. And this allows us to then put in processing facilities that dry and process those very fish. So we extend shelf life and can expand the market from micro local to local to regional to international. And so the services go on all focused on building that integrated agribusiness economy. What are we actually doing? We're taking teaching to fish to the next level. We're building regeneration. And so the economy in that community, Thomas's economy, goes from sustaining to regenerating to thriving. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. The very day that he might need to stay alive long enough to learn how to fish. Teach that same man or woman to fish, and you've provided them with the tools to start the journey of transforming their lives and attaining sustainability. Give them access to credit and markets and the technologies they need and build an agribusiness economy around them. And now you've given them the tools to be able to transform food security within their community, their region, and maybe your life or your grandchildren's. Give that person access to regional and global markets and now you've given them the tool to thrive. I suggest maybe it's time we expand on this proverb. Thank you.